In this video, let's talk about how to balance a chemical equation. According to the law of the conservation of mass, the masses before and after a chemical reaction must be equal. That means the total number of atoms before and after a chemical reaction must be equal. Let's take a look at some examples. Here's an example of a chemical equation that shows the formation of water through the synthesis reaction of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Let's take a look at this equation and see if it's a balanced equation. In our example, we have here two atoms of hydrogen. And on this side, we have two atoms of oxygen. If you will observe and compare it to the product, we have here two atoms of hydrogen, which is equal to the reactants, two atoms of hydrogen. But if you're going to take a look at your oxygen, before the reaction, you have two atoms of oxygen. But in the product side, you only have one atom of oxygen. So because the chemical equation shows that the atoms before and after a chemical equation is not equal, we consider this reaction as unbalanced equation. So how do we balance an equation? Actually, balancing of chemical equation is a trial and error process because it's like working on a puzzle, determining what combinations of numbers will make the left side and right side of the arrow equal. Meaning to say, you need to find the right numbers in order to balance the number of atoms before and after an equation. But we can do some processes in order to solve such problem. Here is an example of a method. Step number one is to identify the types of atoms present before and after a chemical equation. So on the reactant side, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. On the product side, we also have hydrogen and we also have oxygen. Now let's put a line just to separate the reactant to the product. Now, on the second step, we identify how many atoms are there per element and we balance them one at a time. It goes like this. For the element hydrogen, as you can see, it has a subscript of two. So we will write here that hydrogen has two atoms indicated by this. On the product side, we can see that hydrogen has a subscript of two. That means hydrogen has two atoms here. As you can see, hydrogen and oxygen are balanced, so we don't need to do anything. Now, for oxygen, on the reactant side, it has two. And on the product side, it has only one indicated by no subscript. As you can see, oxygen atoms on the reactant and product side are not equal. So we need to balance them. And we do that by identifying the LCD between 2 and 1. So the LCD of 2 and 1 is equal to 2. So since this one, the reactant side, is already equal to 2, we don't need to do anything to this number. Now this number, which is 1 on the product side, is not equal to 2, which is the LCD of the two numbers. So what we do is, we need to find a number wherein if we multiply that to 1, it will give us the LCD, which is 2. So what do you think is the number that we can multiply to 1 to make it equal to 2? The number is 2. This number will be what we call the coefficient of the equation. So where do we write the coefficient? We write the coefficient, this 2 here, to where the oxygen is located on the product side. Now, since oxygen is part of the compound, we write the 2 before the compound, like this, a big number. That means this coefficient will affect all the elements present in the compound. Since hydrogen is part of the compound, we need to multiply this subscript to the coefficient, which is 2. So that means hydrogen 
instead of only having 2, we need to multiply it by 2. Again, because it has a coefficient. So that means 2 times 2 is now equal to 4. Now, if you're going to observe, the oxygen atoms were already balanced. But since the coefficient 2 affected the hydrogen, the hydrogen atoms are no longer equal to one another. On the reactant side, we have 2 atoms of hydrogen. And on the product side, we have 4 atoms of hydrogen. So, we will find again the LCD between these two numbers in order to balance them. So, what is the LCD of 2 and 4? So, the answer is 4. Because the product side hydrogen is already equal to 4, we don't need to do anything about it. Now, what we need to do is to find the number that we will multiply to 2 in order for it to be equal to 4, the LCD. And that number is 2. Now, since we add or we multiply the hydrogen to 2, this number 2 here will become the coefficient of the substance where the hydrogen is located. Since in our reactant side, the hydrogen is found here, we write the coefficient 2 here. Now, observe this one. Since the coefficient 2 on the reactant side is only for the hydrogen, since oxygen is not with the oxygen, unlike in the product side, the coefficient will not affect the oxygen gas. Bottom line is, if the coefficient is written on a molecule like this, hydrogen, it will not affect the other elements present in the reactant side. On the other hand, if the coefficient is written in a compound, like water, H2O, it will affect all the elements present in the compound. Now, let's take a look what happened after we solve the equation. We have here coefficient 2 for the hydrogen gas, so that means 2 times 2 equals 4 hydrogen gas. On the product side, we have the coefficient 2 and a subscript of 2 for hydrogen. So that means 2 times 2 is equal to 4. That means the hydrogen atoms are now equal 4. For the oxygen, we have on the reactant side, we have here a coefficient of 1. But we don't need to anymore write the coefficient 1 here. But it is understood that there, if there is no number before the compound or element, it is equal to coefficient of 1. Anyway, so 1 times the subscript of 2 means there are 2 atoms of oxygen in the reactant side. On the product side, we have the coefficient of 2 and we have a subscript of 1 for the oxygen. So that means 2 times 1 is also equal to 2. That means the hydrogen and the oxygen on both sides of the reaction are equal. We can now say that the equation is balanced. Now, what are the coefficients of the entire reaction? So, we have here a 2, comma, we have here a 1, and we have here a 2. So, the coefficients of the balance equation is 2, 1, 2. Let's take a look at the other examples. Let us have example number 2. So, we have here the formation of calcium fluoride and lithium oxide through the combination reaction of calcium oxide and lithium fluoride. So if you're going to observe if the equation is balanced, let's see. We have calcium, we have 1 on the reactant side. For the oxygen on the reactant side, we have 1. On the product side, we have 1 also. So, so far, they are equal. Now for the lithium on the reactant side, we have 1. And lithium on the product side, it is equal to 2. So as you can see, between these two numbers, the equation is already considered to be unbalanced. So let's balance it. So again, step number one is to identify the elements present both on the left and right side of the equation. For calcium on the reactant side, one, because there's no subscript here. For the product side, since calcium has also no subscript, thus it is equal to one. For oxygen in the reactant side, no subscript, that means one. For the product side, oxygen, no subscript, 1 likewise. For lithium, on the reactant side, we have 1. And for the product side, 
it has a subscript of 2, that means lithium is equal to 2. Since both numbers are not equal, we find their LCD, which is equal to 2. So that means we need to find a number that, we, that when multiplied to 1 will give us an answer of 2. And that number is equal to 2. So we put this coefficient to where the lithium is located. Now this substance has no lithium. This substance has a lithium. Since it is a compound, we write it in front of the compound. Now, since lithium has now a coefficient of 2 and a subscript of 1, 2 times 1 is equal to 2, which is equal to the lithium on the product side. Now, let's continue. If you will observe, this 2 does not affect calcium and oxygen because calcium and oxygen is not part of the compound, only fluorine. For fluorine, since fluorine is part of the compound and the compound has a coefficient, that means 2 will be multiplied to the subscript of fluorine, which is 1. So 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Now, on the product side, we have 2 as a subscript of fluorine, which is equal to the reactant side. Now, let us see if it is already balanced. Calcium 1, calcium 1, oxygen 1, oxygen product side 1, lithium 2 times 1 is equal to 2, lithium product side has a subscript of 2. Now, fluorine coefficient of 2, subscript of 1 is equal to 2, and then fluorine has a subscript of 2. That means the equation is already balanced. Now, what are the coefficients of the balance equation? Calcium oxide has no coefficient. That means it is 1, comma. Lithium fluoride has a coefficient of 2. Calcium fluoride has no coefficient. That means 1. And lithium oxide has no coefficient, that means 1. So the balance equation has a coefficient of 1, 2, 1, 1. Let's go to the third example. This is the equation for the production of phosphorus acid and hydrochloric acid using phosphorus trichloride and water. Now the equation is said to be unbalanced. Let's try to balance it out. First, write the elements present on the reactant and product side. For the element of phosphorus in the reactant side, no subscript, that means 1. On the product side, we have the phosphorus here has no subscript, that means it is equal to 1. So, so far, the phosphorus are equal. Next, for the chlorine in the reactant side, we have 3. On the product side, for the chlorine, we have 1, that means the two numbers are not equal, we need to find their LCD. The LCD between 3 and 1 is 3. No need to do anything to this 3. But on the product side, we need to multiply this to a number in order for it to be equal to 3. And that number is equal to 3. This number will be the coefficient to where the chlorine is located in the product side, which is here. We write it in front of the compound. Next one, we have the hydrogen in the reactant side, which is equal to 2. Now, take a look at this one. For the product side, we have two compounds which contains hydrogen atoms. Now, if you encounter this, what you just need to do is to add the atoms for each compound. So, for the first compound, we have here three atoms of hydrogen. Plus, since the compound has a coefficient of 3, that means 3 times the subscript of hydrogen, which is 1. So 3 times 1 is equal to 3. So that means 3 atoms from the phosphorus acid and 3 atoms of hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid. So 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. The two numbers are not equal. We find their LCD and the LCD is equal to 6. So that means we multiply this number to a number in order for it to be equal to 6. And that number is none other than 3. So we need to write this 3 to where the hydrogen is located in the reactant side, which is in water. So we write here 3 as the coefficient for water. Now let's proceed. 
Now, for oxygen, the reactant side has a coefficient of 3, and the oxygen has a subscript of 1. That means 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Now, for the product side, oxygen has a subscript of 3. So, we write here 3, which makes the entire equation balanced. So, what are the coefficients of the balance equation? For the phosphorus trichloride, there's no coefficient. That means 1, comma. For the water, it's 3, comma. For the phosphorus acid, there's no coefficient, 1. And for the hydrochloric acid, 3. So the coefficients are 1, 3, 1, 3. Let's have the last example. For this example, I'm going to teach you a shorter version of balancing an equation. Bear in mind that this technique is only applicable if polyatomic ions are part of the equation. In our example, we have polyatomic ions permanganate, MnO4, and hydroxide, OH. Now, if we're going to take a look at the product side, we still have the same polyatomic ions, hydroxide and permanganate. If polyatomic ions did not disassociate after the reaction, this technique is applicable. Now, let's identify the substances in each equation. Here are the substances for each side. We have potassium on the reactant and product side. We have permanganate in the reactant and product side. Now, these polyatomic ions will be taken as one. Calcium in the reactant and product side. And likewise, hydroxide in the reactant and product side. Again, these polyatomic ions will be taken as one. Now, let's balance them. For the first one, potassium in the reactant side, we have one. For the product side, we have one for potassium. Now, for the permanganate, or the MnO4 in the reactant side, we have 1. Now, for the product side, as you can see, the MnO4 is enclosed in a parenthesis with a subscript of 2. If a polyatomic ion is enclosed in a parenthesis, that means the number outside the parenthesis is the number of pieces of the polyatomic ions. Now, since MnO4 again is enclosed in a parenthesis with a subscript of 2, it means we have two pieces of MnO4. So we write here 2. Since the MnO4 are not equal, we will find their LCD, which is 2. We will not do anything to this number here because it is already equal to its LCD, 2. So therefore, we will multiply this number to a certain number to make it equal to 2, their LCD. And that number is none other than 2. We will write this 2 here as the coefficient to where we can find the MnO4 written here. Now, if you will observe, the 2 will affect all the elements in this compound. Unfortunately, potassium is included in that compound. That means 2, the coefficient, will affect the number of potassium. A while ago, we only have one atom of potassium, but since we have a coefficient of 2 here, again, where potassium is part of it, that means instead of only having one potassium, our potassium is now equal to 2. 2 times the subscript of 1 for potassium is equal to 2. We will go back to our first substance, potassium, because they are no longer equal. So find the LCD of the 2 potassium, the 2 and the 1, their LCD is equal to 2. Find the number to multiply to the 1 to make it equal to 2 and that number is 2. So we will write this number to where the potassium is located which is here in the product side. For the calcium in the reactant side, we only have 1. For the product side, there is no subscript for calcium. That means 1. For the hydroxide, as you can see, the hydroxide in the reactant side is enclosed in a parenthesis with a subscript of 2. This means we have 2 pieces of hydroxide. Now for the product side, as you can see, the hydroxide here is not enclosed in a parenthesis, but there is a coefficient of 2. So 2 times the subscript of 1 for the OH is equal to 2. Now we have a balanced equation. 
So what are the coefficients of the balance equation? We have for the potassium permanganate, we have a coefficient of 2. For the calcium hydroxide, we have a coefficient of 1. For the potassium hydroxide, we have a coefficient of 2. And for the last one, calcium permanganate, we have 1. So the coefficients of the balance equation is 2, 1, 2, 1. Balancing of chemical equation is not easy when you start working on it. But as you practice more and more, balancing of chemical equation will just be a piece of cake to you. So practice in order to make your work faster.